So will this be the year that Dabo can finally get over to hump with Clemson? And is Notre Dame poised to finally make a run to the college football playoff and possibly a national championship? These are all questions that we are hopefully going to have answers for you as we kick off Bet On It, the college football edition 2024 on wagertalk.com. Joe Ranieri alongside Kelly Stewart, Marco D'Angelo. And folks, it is football season, and we love it. Welcome back. Week one ahead of us here, Marco. And let's be honest, the game you want to talk about here on our big game is probably one of the ones that I bet first and foremost here is Notre Dame taking on Texas A&M, number seven versus number 20. You can't write a better storyline here, Marco. Former quarterback going up against former coach, opposite sides. What gives in this game? Well, the first question, Joe, involving Texas A&M, did they get the coach right yet? Mm. You know, this is a team that has not had success in hiring head coaches, (laughs) and Jimbo Fisher uh, experiment didn't work out. So enter a new head coach, uh, Mike Elko. Uh, He comes in from Duke, and as you said, he's going to be going against his former quarterback uh, that was with him at Duke, and being a defensive-minded coach, you think he'll know how to defend his former quarterback, but I do like this Texas A&M team. Uh, They bring back uh, nine starters on both sides of the football, so this is one of the uh, top teams bringing back, uh, you know, the new phrase in college football is bringing back returning production. I love the portal <laughs> as we get into the new football era and NILs. But I am looking at this one, and I think Texas A&M, home opener, new head coach, I like this spot. And if you remember, just a couple years ago, it was Notre Dame that had the new head coach on opening weekend. They played a big game. They played Ohio State. Everybody figured Ohio State was going to steamroll them. New coach getting things underway. Well, you know what? They made a game of it, and they almost upset uh, Ohio State. Not an upset here because Texas A&M is actually the favorite. And the knee-jerk reaction whenever you see Notre Dame as an underdog is, oh, we can get the Irish at points. Well, they're an underdog for a reason. I like this Texas A&M team. I like the roster. I like the head coach. And... I'm ready to go ahead and take Texas A&M. I'm going to lay the small number in this one with Texas A&M. We're laying the field goal. I have Texas A&M getting the job done 23-17. to This should be one of the better games on the weekend. I don't expect a lot of scoring in this one. One of the best home field advantages in all of college football. They're going to be hopping there at College Station uh, this weekend. Kelly Stewart! Uh, week one college football, and I would expect nothing more than you chose Dabo Sweeney taking on Kirby Smart. What better way to start week one in the college football season than ACC versus SEC? Tell me, who wins this game? Do do you think I actually wanted to take Dabo Sweeney? Like, this is a guy who doesn't even trust the transfer portal. He wants to build from within. The guy is living in 2005. But you're going to give me two touchdowns with the Tigers here? You've got Dabo, who is a neutral site king. I need to get more props now that I'm not in the host chair. This man has covered six straight as a double-digit underdog on neutral fields. I don't think they're getting enough love in this matchup. Plus, remember the last time these two met? 2021, Georgia went on to win the national title game. But I think I took a nap during this game. It was a complete snooze fest. Not a single offensive touchdown was scored. Final score, 10-3. Look, I think Georgia is poised to make another run. It is a plug-and-play system, just like Alabama was, even though they lost a ton of players to the draft. Look, I think this team's going to be fine. Carson Beck, probably going to make a nice Heisman run. But 13-and-a-half, week one, give me the ugly Tigers here with Dabo to uh, keep this one close. Do I think they're going to win outright? I don't, but... So let's call it a 21-17 final. Mm, interesting here. So Clemson, Georgia, Texas A&M, Notre Dame. I feel like we're missing something here. Oh, yeah. Can somebody please explain to me why nobody is talking about Lincoln Riley and the USC Trojans? It, it may be the most head-scratching 
game of the week to me as the LSU Tigers and Brian Kelly keep getting all the love this week and even over the last over the summer months uh nobody seems to think that USC is worth taking a look at in this game and I have absolutely no idea why it's not like Lincoln Riley is not going to have an offense and I keep hearing about the USC defense oh the defense is terrible Oh, they were awful last year. Yeah, well, do you remember if it wasn't for Jaden Daniels dropping 50 points a game, LSU would have been less than 500 last year. Their defense was nothing to write home about either. We have Nussmeyer, the quarterback for LSU. I don't think there's going to be a big drop off offensively for LSU. They got a ton of offensive weapons. You would expect that from Brian Kelly. But let's face it, uh, Lincoln Riley and his history with quarterbacks and offense, especially going up-tempo, I don't think he'll have a problem with Miller Moss. I think Miller Moss will have a fantastic year for USC. I think he's going to dominate this LSU defense, who quite honestly did not take a step forward after that horrible year last year. USC uh, brings in the defensive coordinator, from USC, uh, from UCLA, rather, DeAnton Lynn. Uh, he had a great defense at UCLA under Chip Kelly. Uh, listen, it's going to be a work in progress. The one thing that I know for sure on a neutral field at Allegiant Stadium is I would not be given a Lincoln Riley coach team with a quality quarterback. I wouldn't be giving them this many points. I also wouldn't sniff an under. So as far as I'm concerned, it's USC and the over all day in this game here. And then watch how many people jump on the USC bandwagon once they win this game outright against LSU. There, I said it. All right, so I do not have a pair of glasses, but I do have a couple of pencils. I'm not sure that's going to help Ralph the pen. Michael's in the house, but Ralph, welcome in. The college football edition of Bet On It. We're off and running a new season. Week one is here, Ralph, and there is no doubt a whole lot of TNA we've got to dive into. And I love your charts, and I love especially the third one we're going to get to. But why don't we talk week one favorites in general here, Ralph? What are we looking at here in week one in the college football season? Well, what I like to do here on the TNA segment, Trends and Angles, is help you understand what occurs regularly in college football. So let's take a look at game number one, favorites and dogs. This chart dates back to 2018. It excludes the 2020 COVID year because some teams were playing game one in November. So take a look at the year by year home favorites. Every year prior to last year was 50% or better. But blindly, you bet game one favorites, you've gone 53% since 2018. And take a look at away favorites on the bottom. 50%, 25%, 47%, and yes, that is a typo. That should be uh, that should be five and seven, 41%, not mm. 71% on the bottom. But blindly, Joe, home favorites have done well, game number one. Away favorites have done poorly. We've got also another group of favorites, Ralph, we should uh, we should mention. And that, of course, is the dreaded double-digit favorites. You look up and down the board, we got plenty of double-digit favorites heading into week one of the college football season. Ralph, what does the chart tell us about these teams? Again, this goes back to 2018, excludes the 2020 year. Joe, the top two lines are double digit away favorites you see double digit away favorites of 10 or higher have gone 41 percent against the spread away favorites of 17 and higher there have only been six of them they've gone three and three home favorites have been just above the mendoza line but i want to skip to the very bottom in the pink when you have a double digit home favorite against an fbs foe a lot of teams are laying big chalk against FCS teams. Those teams just do not get as excited playing an FCS opponent, laying 30, 40, or 50 points. But take a look at double-digit favorites in game one when they're playing an FBS opponent. Double-digit favorites, 58%. Home favorites of 17 or higher, 56%. Home favorites of 24 or higher, 56.5%. Now about this. 
Game one, home favorites of 30 or higher, Joe? Only been 31 of them. They've gone 20, 10, and 1, 67% since 2018. Didn't see a 50 or more there, uh, a la Ohio State, although I do think that has actually come down to uh, 48, 48 and a half now, which I find hilarious against uh, your Akron Zips here in week one there, Ralph. All right, the other big thing that we always get this time of year because they implemented week zero is you have these teams with a game under their belt, Ralph, heading into week one of the college football season, having already played against team that has not played. Is it an advantage? Is it a disadvantage? I love this chart. Tell me exactly how it breaks down with those that have played a game versus those that haven't. So, Joe, we should play a game. Let's go and read every newsletter for this week in college Mm. football and see how many times a team says this game has a game under their belt so they have an advantage, like Florida State, like Boston College, like Georgia Tech, like Hawaii. Well, I'll tell you what, that's why we do these charts to prove those myths wrong. And this is a very big, incorrect betting myth. This goes back, again, since 2018. This chart shows teams playing game number one of the season against teams playing game number two. Take a look since 2018. Teams playing their season opener versus a team with a game under their belt. 55.9% against the spread. Now, 56% is not an incredible number, but think about it. How many times did you handicap a game wrong and you took a team that you thought had a game under the belt advantage and they've only covered 44%? On the bottom, I broke them down. You see that the home favorites, home dogs, and away favorites are a very small sample size. The biggest sample size away dogs with over 330 games, but away favorites playing game one versus a team under their belt, 59.3%. Home dogs, 68.4%. And away dogs, 55% against the spread. So those teams again, Joe, while you think there's a big edge for Florida State, New Mexico, Georgia Tech, Hawaii, SMU, and Nevada, it's proven that has not been the case. Crazy stuff there, uh, especially given some of these splits on those teams that have a game under their belt already. All right, Ralph Michaels, week one of the college football TNA. It's in the books here, my friend. Can't wait to see what you bring to the table for us next week. In the meantime, we got to figure out, is the deli open? Well, are we fading Joe Public? There is a lot to discuss here, and we're going to do it right now. So over the years, one of our uh, favorite segments here on the show has always been uh, the dogs and whether or not they'll be barking. But uh, Kelly is notoriously known for her dogs in college football. And we got a double-digit dog of the week here, Kelly, that we want to break down. Uh, there were a lot of options here. How did you land on FAU? as a double-digit dog of the week. There was a lot of options, Joe, but trying to find a double-digit dog that's going to win outright is so hard. (laughs) I usually look around that, like, touchdown to, like, 10, 11. When you start getting into two touchdown underdogs, it makes it really hard to make a case for a team to win outright. But Friday night game, so I didn't – I wasn't able to put this one in my parlay, so I wanted to get this one out early. 13 and a half there in East Lansing. If you guys have been paying attention, Mel Tucker is out. They got a new head coach from Corvallis. He is in, but he did inherit a ton of issues. And while Smith did a good job as an underdog for us at Oregon State, boy, I'm not sure he's ready for the terrible record that this team has as a home favorite, especially when laying double digits. Tom Herman, on the other hand, now I know he's not in Austin these days, but if you remember, he was a great home dog then. He is a great underdog at FAU, especially as a double-digit road dog. He's even won three out of four of those outright. So my bankroll appreciates the hell out of this man. I'm looking for a team that is scrappy, that is hungry and ready to play. I know a lot of people are going to laugh at me for this one each and every week because it's hard. But if we hit one or two of these, 
just as a double digit outrider, we're going to be having a profitable college football season. Ultimately, I think Sparty's defense could win them this game because that is where they excel. But this offense is laughable at best. So don't forget to put a little bit of sprinkle on that FAU money line. Oh, the FAU Owls got to love it there. And Marco, uh, I, you know, and I, Said that maybe is the deli open. Then I realized deli's not open. It's it's week one. We might have a half a sandwich somewhere in there. So that means one thing. We've got ourselves a trap game coming up here. And uh, which one are we looking at here for the trap game of the week? Well, Joe, I'm going to give you a little trap game. And yeah, I am going to bring you half a sandwich. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we found a little nugget there. We're going to take a look at the Northwestern Miami of Ohio game. And let's start this off. Uh, Northwestern game is a home game for Northwestern. But remember, this year, they're not going to be playing on their normal home field. Uh, their field is, their stadium is being renovated. So they're going to be splitting time at two different uh, venues. So you won't have that full home field advantage for them in their games. Also, let's start and look at this uh, last year, Northwestern. What a surprise. After an absolute disaster the year before, and then heading into the season last year, you had the turmoil off the field with the head coach where they had to pivot, fire the coach, hire a new coach uh, right before the season started. Nobody would have expected this team to go 9-4 and four last season. Uh, kudos to them. Now it's year two for head coach David Braun. And although he did a great job last year, maybe they caught some teams by surprise that looked right past them, given the chaos at Northwestern in the previous record the year before, and really not knowing what to expect game planning wise against the new head coach. But now you've got a season's worth of game film to look at, and they're not gonna sneak up on anybody this year. Also, let's look at Miami of Ohio. You want to talk about consistency? Well, Chuck Martin, head coach, has been there for 11 years. Guess what? <laughs> His quarterback's been there half the time. Six-year <laughs> starter in uh, quarterback for uh, Miami of Ohio, uh, Gabbert. Uh, he is uh, Brett Gabbert. 38 games there. Uh, he's gone 23 and 15 in those uh, 38 games. He's passed for over 7,700 yards, 59 touchdown passes, 18 interceptions. Miami started 6-1 and one last year, but as been the uh, fact with Gabbert, he got hurt again. And after the 6-1 and one start, missed the rest of the season uh, after being injured. This is a guy that is experienced, obviously, six years. You've got the stability of being uh, head coach, it's been there forever. I think they come out and hit the ground running uh, this season against Northwestern. And here is the trap part. When you look at this, when you got a Big Ten school who's coming off a good season and they're laying less than a field goal at home to a Mac school, that's the first red flag. The second red, that's the trap side of it. And that half a sandwich that I promised you, take a look. Northwestern plays next week short week they play on friday night on a tv game on fox sports one this is a little bit of maybe a possible look ahead you don't figure a team to look ahead in their season opener but you got a max school you got your rivalry with duke on deck i'll go ahead i'll take miami for the mild upset here miami of ohio is your trap game of the week Woo, Miami of Ohio, the Red Hawks kicking it off for a little trap game and a half a sandwich. Wow, we're really dishing out the half-price menu here, are we not? Uh, all right, it is time uh, for our Fade Joe Public uh, segment here on the college football edition of Bet On It. And listen, I as much as this pains me because we're getting the wrong number here, uh, we could have had a much better number. Uh, but there is a reason why this number keeps falling uh, against Penn State and West Virginia. West Virginia and Morgantown at home. The entire, everybody in the public, Joe Public loves themselves. Some Nittany Lions here, loves Penn State. And listen, uh, on the outside, on paper, they got a pretty good team with Alar. They got an entire stable of running backs that have come back. 
Uh, they uh, the defensive front is going to be good. So you got to ask yourself: This was 10, 10 and a half over the summer. Why are we down to eights? Uh, somebody seems to be fading Penn State, and I get it. Morgantown's not an easy place to play by any stretch. Uh, you got to love Green being back. You got to love the offensive weapons. As much as I hate Neil Brown, this is exactly the kind of game where where you want to fade him, and then he figures out a way somehow to win it. It's a game Neil Brown wins, and it usually is a game that Franklin figures out how to throw up all over himself. So I get why the public loves Penn State, but it would not shock me if this comes down to the wire and Penn State barely clears the hurdle of winning this game. All right, good stuff here. Now, of course, it's a new college football season, which means one thing. It is time for a brand new VR college gold segment for 2024. Gianni DeGreek joining us with some gold here today. And Gianni, welcome in. Happy 2024 college football, my friend. Uh, I know you got a $2 best bet college football that folks can head over to your page at wagertalk.com and grab. And I would highly suggest they grab it because it's been available. The popularity of it, they've extended the ability for two bucks for folks to go over to that page and get it done. So don't waste time. WT.buzz forward slash VR. Go grab that $2 best bet. Now, VR, I've been waiting a while to ask you this. What's our college football gold week one? What do we got? We got a lot. Now, real quickly, I've been asked a lot about futures, and I wasn't able to share a ton because I mostly do season win totals. Those are available over at Wager Talk. But real quickly, for those looking at national championship, the edge and the hold is just too high for the book side. And with college football, you're just not going to find that diamond in the rough. There's a couple teams that challenge each and every year, and most of it has to do with blue chip recruiting. If you notice, there's a, a, a ratio that if you stick to it, teams that get a lot more four and five star recruits as compared to two and three star recruits and the teams at the top right now going into this year that stick out are georgia ohio state or alabama i know they're probably favored and up at the top but you can't look elsewhere because one of those three teams will most likely win the national championship also real quickly before i share the gold do not buy points that's rule number one we already know we don't tease college football but please 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 Unless you are 100% certain what a half a point costs, do not buy it. Because more times than not, you will be paying a premium for it, so you're not getting the best of it. Meaning, a minus 3.5, minus 110 equals minus 3, minus 127 in college football. More times than not, when you buy off the 3.5, they're going to charge you 130, 135. So in your mind, you may think you have minus 3, but you don't. Minus three, minus 130 is worse than minus three and a half, minus 110. Now, there's a whole list I have here of what each half point is worth, and I'll try to share some of those week in and week out with you guys. Now, some of the gold that we got down on, keep in mind, week one, these lines have been up for months. The goal is to get out ahead of the market. Sometimes when you do that and the line moves significantly, you need to come back and test the other side because not only do you have a middle opportunity but a lot of time information also changes because people get injured uh in not only in key positions but even some backup positions that affect what's going to happen so you got to remember a lot of times we got down early some of these lines are available some are not the strongest i uh release to subscribers with the percentage to decide out of respect to them i will not share what percentage we gave and I'm gonna give out as much as possible. Some of these we did not get down on uh, because there is a ton of manipulation going on in the market, especially now with college and NFL starting. So let's start off with Saturday, Florida International, game 151 plus 21. We took the three touchdowns there. We also did with UConn, game 155. Now, Eastern Michigan and UMass, this is one of those where we took Eastern Michigan plus the three early, that went down to a pick -em. That's when we took UMass actually as a plus one dog and then laid the one and a half on UMass as well. So we have 3% 
on Eastern Michigan plus three. We got 3% on UMass plus one, and then 3% on UMass minus one and a half. That's the best kind of bets you could possibly hope for. I know it pisses subscribers off sometimes when they buy later in the week or month, and they're like, wait, what do I do? He's got both sides. Well, we don't have both sides. We place two very advantageous bets that are just not available to you right now. So if they're not available, you simply do nothing. You pass. Why? Because we don't bet bad numbers. Move down the West Virginia game, 172 plus 10 and a half. Now that one's down the eight. Don't be surprised if I send out uh, Penn State minus eight for about one or 2% because we already got plus 10 and a half on the dog. Why would I not try to middle that when the total is only around 50? We'd be foolish not to. Again, this is the, the real turn profit game, not to trying to sell you a pit game. Because I know if I was selling you a package, you're going to get pissed if you see both sides. But if you're trying to win, make money, you're going to be extremely happy when I get you down on two good numbers. Now let's move over to game 182, Arizona minus 30 and 30 and a half. Game 183, Wyoming plus the seven. We laid 120 to get that plus seven as well. Now, if it's at six and a half, here's what you got to remember. Plus six and a half minus 110 equals plus seven minus 124. So if you're going to pay more than 124 to get that half a point to seven, don't do it. Take the plus six and a half at minus 110 if you agree with me, because it's the exact same thing as getting plus seven, especially if you're paying too much big. Now go down to the final game and that's Notre Dame, Texas A&M. We have a difference of opinion between betting syndicates at different numbers. Now, the first group came in and took Texas A&M on the money line at minus 108, minus 110, minus 115. That's when they backed off. When it got to three, that same group and another came in and hit up Notre Dame plus three and then also took a Notre Dame on the money line. So they got Texas A&M at a pick them. And they got Notre Dame plus three and some money line action. Now, a couple totals real quick. Under 49 in that Notre Dame, Texas A&M game. Over 47 and a half, 48 and 48 and a half in Wyoming and Arizona State. And finally, Kent Pittsburgh over 54 and a half. Now, I'm giving you everything I have on this sheet that I've already moved. Not all are premiums, but a handful of them are. Whether you follow, fade, or ignore, again, I hope you cash them, don't trash them. The goal is to share as much actionable information with you so that you're able to absorb it and do the right things with it. Again, whether you follow it or fade it, and more importantly, just bet size correctly. The information becomes useless. The win rate becomes useless if you're over betting your edge. Again, we work with a 20% risk of ruin with my subscribers with our bet sizing. I think that's even a little too high for most sports bettors because of the volatility. But again, the smaller you bet in relation to your bankroll, the lower your risk of ruin. The higher you bet in relation to bankroll, the higher the risk of ruin. You want your risk of ruin extremely low, bet size low in relation to your bankroll. I cannot give you better advice than that. The picks are meaningless. Whether I go 15 and 0 or 0 and 15, it's not gonna change your life. But if you bet size correctly, this college football season, it will, because you'll learn the difference uh, between managing risk correctly and hoping to be the product of good luck. My goal for you, again, is to have a profitable college football season, and hopefully we repeat what we did in 2023. God bless. Thanks again for the support. There he is, VR, another edition of College Football Gold. And do not forget, my job is to share actionable information, and here's the best you're going to hear all week. He's got a $2 play available on his page right now in college football. It doesn't get any better than that. Head over to his page at wagertalk.com. Pick up his $2 college football best bet. I can't think of a better way to kick off the college football season week one than partnering up with VR. Go grab that $2 play here today. WT.buzz forward slash VR. Always a pleasure, Gianni. We'll pick it up again next week. Week two of college football gold coming your way. All right, good stuff. We've got best bets now coming up. Before we do that, I would like to let you know, in honor of the college football season, as well as the NFL season, getting ready to go underway, how about a buy two, get one free opportunity for you guys here? That's right. You can get two weeks. Buy a two-week, 14-day all-access package. Get an extra week for free. That's three weeks of all-access 
all about football, college football, NFL, and then, of course, you still have baseball going on. Great opportunity and save yourself a $99 savings here by getting three weeks instead of two, and all access is the way to go. No coupon needed, guys. You can just head over to your favorite cappers page at wagertalk.com uh, and take advantage of it. Get that extra week free now. No better way to start the college football and NFL season than with buy two, get one for free. All right, best bet time here, Cal, and uh, college football uh, week one is here. And I'm uh, I'm so confused because uh, I'm in a million and one different contests with you. And I'm trying to remember, is it college? Is it NFL? It's a very hectic time of year. Tell us how folks can get involved with some of your contests and give us the best bet for week one. Joe, you're hilarious. You just got to get these spreadsheets. Google Docs are your <laughs> friends. I'll make you one like I have for mine. Uh, Splash Sports and I have partnered together again for college football season. I've got three college contests, a $500 pick em, a $100 pick em. Those are both seven picks against the spread per week. This can play against me. Enter in 41 different states. And like I said earlier on Twitter, you can drive to a neighboring state. That's the uh, pro tip. Sign up and then you can submit from anywhere going forward from there. And then Kelly and Murray, my good friend John Murray and I decided to do a college football survivor. Few double pick weeks makes it a little more difficult and you got to save some guys for the college football championships. Uh, it's going to be really fun. $100 entry there and guess what? It's guaranteed money. $100,000 no matter if the contest fills or not. So we all know that one is plus EV. Splashsports.com backslash Kelly in Vegas. Now on for the best bet. This will be the third leg of my three team parlay. You guys will be able to get the other two legs on Friday. Wyoming plus six and a half. I have a quick question. Who are the Sun Devils to be laying almost a touchdown here? You have an Arizona State team five and 10 against the spread since 2019 as home chalk. And oh, by the way, oh, and six against the spread versus the Mountain West. Okay, fine. Not all of those are Coach Dillingham's fault, who is in his second year in Scottsdale. But he also has a transfer quarterback from Michigan State. I'm not sure this team isn't going to struggle mightily their first year in the Big 12. Not to mention after Wyoming, who do they have on deck? Mississippi State. Doesn't matter. It's still an SEC team. People always have those games circled. We'll call it a little bit of a look ahead. As far as Wyoming goes, their former defensive coordinator takes over for Craig Bull. Jay Savell is going to return 13 starters for this Cowboys team. And I know Harrison Whaley, he is a no-go for this one. That is their running back. He is injured, and we do plan on this team running the hell out of the ball. But I think the Cowboys are going to get the W without him. Do not forget to sprinkle a little bit on that money line. Oh, got to love it. Wyoming right off the bat for a best bet for Kelly. Love, love, love that. We did make uh, quite a bit of money backing Wyoming in a few key spots there last year. There's no reason not to think that won't roll right into uh, this season. Marco, let me ask you, uh, buy two, get one free. Sounds like a hell of an opportunity to kick off the football season the right way. And uh, if they head over to your page, all access is all access, is it not? It is. And Joe, that comes out to less than $10 a day. And it's not just football. You're mm. going to get all of our baseball plays, all of our basketball. Basketball? Is basketball playing? Yeah. WNBA. Woo. We're 20 and seven this year in the WNBA uh, spot plays, but we have been absolutely crushing that. You'll get everything I have for the next three weeks when you sign up for that buy two, get one free. Great opportunity. 198 gets you those three weeks, as I said, less than $10 a day. Let's get to the best bet. And guys, if you remember last year, opening week, I lost. And you guys gave us some grief in the chat after <laughs> we had a bad opening week to bet on it last year. Well, after that, we ran off the next 11 weeks with our college best bet. So let's see if we can keep that rolling along this year with the college best bets. And I'm going to go to Virginia Tech this week, and I am going to lay the points with Virginia Tech against Vanderbilt. Virginia Tech uh, head coach Brent Pry starts year number three. Now, guys, 
when a new coach takes over, I think year three is the year you see the biggest improvement on a team if the coach has got it right. Why? Well, remember, when you take over that first year, you are inheriting a lot of players from that former coaching regime. Yes, you can turn a roster over, but you can't completely turn over a roster. Well, today, almost you can uh, with the transfer portal, but it takes time to learn a new system. Year two, you've got a nice mix of your players in there, plus experience of running your new systems for the players. But year three, there's no excuses. You've got two year, two full years of your recruits in there, learning your system and running what you want to run. And last year, we saw Virginia Tech. They finished the season on a five and two straight up run and five and two against the spread. That is pointing the needle in the right direction. Not only that, is this team is bringing back eleven offensive starters from last year, bringing back the whole offense, including quarterback. Drones, who's a dual threat quarterback. This is a guy that passed for over 2,000 yards last year, but he also rushed for over 800 yards. He had a touchdown to interception ratio of 17 to 3. Considering the way this team is moving forward, considering that this is one of the highest uh, teams in returning production in the country, uh, they're ranked number four overall offensively and defensively. I think they are poised to make a run this year. Uh, Vanderbilt, what can I say? Well, they got a new field to play on this year. Um, that's exciting, <laughs> but this is still a team that's nine and 27 the last three years. Uh, I can't get excited about them. I'm gonna go with Virginia Tech. Uh, they have got everybody back. They went bowling last year, and that's something to make note of. Teams that did play in bowl games, especially when they haven't the last few years, that's a big advantage because you get those extra practices in December. And when you're facing a team that didn't go bowling and is not good and you're bringing back the team, that's a huge leg up. I think Virginia Tech gets out of the blocks. I am going to lay the big number on the road with Virginia Tech. Why? Well, you know what? When they're trying to protect the lead, they can run the football and they can add to the score. I got Virginia Tech winning. 37 to 17 as week one college best bet. Well, a lot of folks, uh, Mark, I know big Virginia Tech, big dark horse in the ACC for them. They love what that quarterback brings to the table, and they should here. So Virginia Tech getting it done against Vandy for Marco here. And my best bet, I'm going to go uh, quickly here because this game uh, is starting uh, on Thursday night, and I like this game couple of weeks ago, and I'm pretty upset at myself that I didn't get the better number. But either way, I still think it's a win for North Carolina as they open up a non-conference game against Minnesota. Minnesota at home. You got to love what UNC is doing here. They bring in, you lose Drake May. They bring in Max Johnson, who I think is older now anyway, because he's been playing in college football, it feels like, for the last nine years. Uh, you will remember Texas A&M, LSU, the guy can run, the guy has got a cannon, and uh, Chip Lindsey, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina, is going to love what he brings to the table. This is going to be a very run-but-air-out style of offense. Mac Brown is going to love that. The big difference for North Carolina is defensively. No more Gene Chizik. He is gone. They bring in uh, Jeff Collins, who takes over for him, and I love this. I think Jeff Collins is exactly the kind of guy that is going to be able to take this defense to another level. When Chizik had this defense, they were atrocious when Mac Brown got there. They have gotten better and better each year. I think they're going to be able to be even better. They got a lot of returning starters there. And on Minnesota side, they're bringing a brand new quarterback, uh, New Hampshire transfer, Mac Brosmer. Who? Exactly. New Hampshire. That's all you needed to hear there. And of course, P.J. Fleck, love the guy, but he's a giant pan in the you-know-what. And I think uh, it's going to be a rough year here for Minnesota. Not to mention their dual-headed running back combo, Darius Taylor, Marcus Major. Big-time injuries on the offensive line. And in fact, uh, what we're hearing is Taylor's probably not even playing in this one. So I get a young quarterback, 
out of New Hampshire, opening it up under the big lights there in Minnesota against a pretty good defense in North Carolina. North Carolina was a dog uh, just uh, a month or so ago. They're now just a slight favorite. But either way, I think North Carolina goes in there, handles their business, and they throw the ball all over the yard, and they'll do that with Max Johnson this year. So North Carolina as a best bet for me, and that kicks off on Thursday in week one of college football. Don't forget to uh, hit the uh, like button. The thumbs up would be much appreciated. Of course, uh, Marco loves reading your comments. Uh, so go ahead and drop those in the comment section as we get ready, of course, for another season here of uh, college football. Bet on it style, but don't worry. We have got uh, NFL edition of Bet on it still to come as well. Kelly and I will uh, switch seats here. And then, of course, we'll welcome in the newest edition. Teddy Covers will be joining us this season in bet on it in the NFL. So look for that. These episodes drop every Wednesday. So get ready. It's time to cash a whole lot of tickets here. But and we're not even done yet here, guys, because if it's individual games that you want, if it's certain angles you're looking for, nobody's got more content than we do here at Wager Talk during the football season. All you have to do is just click on the video on your screen right now and check out these individual games and, of course, best bets from around the horn and then make plans to come back and join us again next week for another edition of Bet On It. Good luck this week. We'll see you soon.